Hi, my name is John and today's presentation is over aspirin. So to start off, just a little description background on aspirin. Aspirin was one of the first drugs to ever be produced. Um, in the late 1890s, aspirin was discovered by Felix Hoffman at Bayer in Germany. It was not till um, much later that we discovered the mechanism in which aspirin um, was made and how it works. So today there's a huge wealth of information available to us. Um, about how exactly aspirin inhibitors, um, cyclomonooxygenase, known as COX, um, and how that plays a role and how that affects the human body. So today, I'm going to be talking about the mechanism of aspirin and how it works and the breakdown of the pathway levels and the mechanism of it. Okay, so to start off, I'm um, just going to be discussing, like I said, that pathway and the mechanistic level. I'm going to walk through the aspirin pathway that um, which it inhibits, and I'm going to also be showcasing the mechanism of aspirin um, on how it covalently inhibits that COX, that cyclomonooxygenase, and then I'll also be explaining what um, prostaglandins um, do in respect to inflammation and how inhibiting their formation would reduce inflammation. So, first, what is aspirin? Um, first, we understand we must understand what aspirin is in order to grasp this idea and the mechanism and pathway behind it. So aspirin is a, is a trade name for acetyl um, salicylic, which is produced by the Bayer Laboratories. Um, aspirin is one of the most used and cheapest drugs in medicine, um, belonging to the non-steroidal um, anti-inflammatory drug, so the NSAID groups. Um, so that is what aspirin falls under. Aspirin, along with other NSAIDs, are widely used excuse me, to address these nerve signals chemically um, by blocking the effects of certain enzymes that create those uh, prostaglandins. Um, this means less pain and much less swelling. And we'll get kind of into that a little bit more in depth here. This is just kind of a background to what aspirin is. So now let's go into like how aspirin works. So this is just the basics of how it works to get a little bit more understanding of it. So aspirin works to reduce this pain and swelling that we may have by an analgesic, um, which is a pain reliever or an antipyretic, which is a fever reducer, um, and an anti-inflammatory, which fights swelling and inflammation. So those are the three things that make up aspirin. Analgesic, an antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory. So that is what aspirin is. In addition to chemically blocking um, your body's pain signals, aspirin can also reduce um, the risk of heart attacks and certain strokes. Uh, this is why aspirin um, is good for cardiovascular diseases. Um, aspirin actually also works to prevent um, platelets in our blood. So what it, platelets are found in our bloodstream. Um, so it works um, by from clumping and clotting in your arteries. So it prevents those platelets in our bloodstream from coming to a halt in like a certain area within our blood and making a clot formation there. Okay, so <clears throat> thereby reducing these uh, risks um, by improving blood flow um, to our heart and brain. So aspirin is one of the only over-the-counter pain relievers uh, known to have these life-saving benefits. So kind of breaking it down exactly, getting into the kind of the mechanism and pathway of it. Um, prostaglandins, which I talked about earlier, are a group of lipids um, made sites of tissue damage or infection that are involved in dealing with injury and illness. Um, they control processes such as that inflammation. So if we get like a bang to our arm here, um, that swelling will start and that is from that prostaglandin. Okay, so they control those processes such as that inflammation and blood flow and the formation of the blood clots and the induction of labor. So they play a major role during um, females' menstrual cycles and during pregnancy as well. <clears throat> so the it's an enzyme that produces the enzymes that produce these prostaglandins are called that cyclooxygenase, which I presented right away, COX. So the I'm just gonna call them uh, COX inhibitors. So COX2 inhibitors are a subclass of the non-steroidal um, anti-inflammatory drugs, the NSAIDs. So these work by reducing the production of the prostaglandins, which is that chemical which promotes inflammation, pain, and fever. So using these COX inhibitors, um, this would then it help reduce that inflammation and pain since it starts to restrict that formation and production of the prostaglandins. So once <clears throat> that inflammation starts here in the hands. So say we bumped right here. We got that inflammation. 
um, it's really starting to swell, starting to form maybe like a clot or something. Once we take that aspirin, that aspirin is going to work because it is a inhibitor for prostaglandin. So it allows the slowdown of the production of that prostaglandin. So then that'll start to reduce the pain that we may have here and that swelling will start to go down. <clears throat> so this is exactly why we use that aspirin because it helps control it. Aspirin is that COX inhibitor or that NSAID which will help control this. So more of a little in-depth breakdown. So kind of drawing out and showing the mechanism by which aspirin is covalently, covalently inhibited um, COX. So here is kind of the uh, drawing to that and what is going on. So I'm going to kind of explain this. I know it's backwards, but kind of bear with me here. So an arachidonic acid undergoes metabolism uh, by PGH synthase. So here we have the arachidonic acid. Okay, and that's breaking off. So we have we have our acetylated COX2 and our COX2 over here. Okay, so like I said, um, by that PGH synthase, also referred to as that cyclooxygenase um, COX enzyme, so, which is this right here. So that's also known as PGH synthase and forms the prostaglandins, which play a very important role in that inflammation and pain. So thrombaxin um, A2, which is known as TXA2, which we see as we come down into kind of our drawing here. What? So we start off at the COX, and we're gonna come down, talk about the TXA2, which is that thrombaxin A2, which is one of the lipids, which binds to receptor and act, activates that adenocyclase enzyme, resulting in platelet aggregation, so aspirin in this works by acetylation of serine residue and cyclooxygenase enzymes and helps present or prevent this uh, formation of prostaglandins, thus overcoming the pain and inflammation. It also inhibits the formation of the TXA2 acting as an antiplatelet drug or an antithrombotic drug, um, which is why aspirin can be used for those cardiovascular patients, which I stated earlier. So thank you for joining me for this presentation. I hope you learned a little bit about aspirin and the mechanism and pathway of it. Thanks.